afternoon, folks. Uh, I'm outside today, a little different from uh, normal, but I've been fishing and working today. I went on my lunch break and managed to catch another five plus pound uh, bass uh, on a, a ringworm. Uh, I thank Randy Blockett for that because uh, I watched a video of his the other day and he was talking about those ringworms and I'd been passing them up uh, in my tackle box. I have, a guy gave me a big bag of nothing, uh, all Zoom flukes and worms and uh, trailers and I made a big old bag and I've been burning them up for the last few months but I've been skipping those ringworms because they just seemed like they weren't, uh, uh, they picked up my ulcer because uh, I'm fishing around these uh, ponds and I uh, couldn't keep the hook in them very well. But, I watched that video of his, and he he, he lit, swears by him, so I, I caught a good fish on him, and I appreciate that from him. But uh, I wanted to talk a couple of, about a couple of things, uh, kind of in keeping with the same idea of how you can, uh, even without a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience, and, and maybe you don't have, uh, know a lot about bass fishing yet, uh, but you know again we've already talked about you know how to how to find places to fish uh if you're walking or walking the bank uh how to how to tie basic knots uh, a couple of baits to use and how to retrieve them and we talked a little bit about the mindset and your attitude uh but today there's a couple more things that i think are really important that i didn't talk about last time and the first thing is is uh it sharpen your hooks it does not matter what kind of hooks you have gamagatsu or you know uh, any of the cheaper hooks eagle claw whatever it doesn't matter uh, you should always sharpen them. take a little sharpening stone and there's lots of videos on how to do it but it really it doesn't you don't have to really know much just take you you know take your hook and just rub it you know across that across that sharpening stone turn it over and rub it back and you'll feel that point it makes a big difference uh, and a, a second part of that sharpening your hook is the barb. You know, a lot of times we think we want that barb to, you know, this big giant barb sticking out and it's going to keep the fish on the hook. Well, it makes it, uh, the, the bigger that barb is, the harder it is for it to penetrate that uh, uh, fish's mouth. So, you know, you don't have to have this gigantic barb. So I, I kind of file mine down a little bit. I want it to stick them. And I mean, even if, because a lot of times you don't, you're not able to get, uh, you know, uh, full tension on your line. Uh, you, you, you know, sometimes you've got a little slack in your line, and or the fish is swimming towards you, you can't get it, and you want to set that hook. Uh, and so you sometimes you don't get a full hook set, and you want to make sure that you've got a, a, hundred, a good chance of getting it in his mouth. Uh, and so sharpening your hooks and, and making sure that barb is not, you know, not, not this gigantic barb anyway. So. Uh, uh, but you know what 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 else can you do to uh, ensure that you're catching a uh, big fish uh, uh, and there's a couple of other things that I thought about that, that I used to live by and I still live by and the, and one of those things is that big baits catch big bass I mean big baits do I mean they absolutely do yeah you'll see uh, if I use a big spinner bait use a big worm a big Rapala you know you're gonna catch bigger fish it's just the way it is you're gonna catch a smaller fish but you're gonna catch big fish because the thing is is you know the big fish been been around a long time and so they know that they they don't want to expend a whole bunch of energy uh they want if they're going to jump out from their hiding spot and hit something they want to make sure it's going to be a full meal and so i give them one i always fish with bigger baits i don't ever fish with small baits i wouldn't buy a little spinner bait for nothing uh, I buy the biggest Rapala, I buy the biggest worms, I buy the biggest spinnerbait I can. Now, obviously, I'm fishing in, in ponds right now and uh, walking these banks and everything, so, you know, there's uh, different things you, get, you can do to, uh, uh, you, you, I can't use a big giant Rapala or a, a, a one-ounce spinnerbait or anything like that, but I, I still size up. Like, I mean, I'm fishing the bigger topwaters, a, a bigger size pop bar, it's working too. So, uh, and, and one more thing is that if if you if you started worm fishing, I know again we're talking about uh, beginning stuff, but if you started worm fishing or you're fishing with a jig or fishing with something uh, that you know it, it, you're fishing it slow, if you're ever in doubt about whether you've gotten a hit or not, set the hook. I mean, when in doubt, set the hook. Uh, I live by that rule. I mean, if I if I like say I've been you know maybe catch getting in the moss or something like that, but if I'm uncertain about whether uh, you know a fish hit it or not and I, and I think that maybe he did but I'm, I'm really not sure I lay into him I, I do I lay into him and you know a lot of times it's just it's just I'm you know I've been hitting that face many times with my uh, bait so 
I picked I picked hooks out of my face before. So anyway, but those couple of things, uh, you know, when it out, set the hook. Big baits catch big bass. Sharpen them hooks. Those three things right there are gonna make uh, give you a higher percentage of catching bigger fish. And this last couple of weeks has been fantastic for me. Right now it's hot. The uh, fish's metabolism's up. They're eating a lot, and I'm catching my fish in the middle of the day. And so and I learned that from Doug Hannon. You know, it's like deer hunting. You know, people shoot bucks in the middle of the day. People catch big bass in the middle of the day. Matter of fact, I'm gonna go fishing right now.